How does one become lost? There are countless variables that may contribute to why an individual might have been on a particular path and then encountered an obstacle or event that caused a halt or deviation. Drawn from ancient views, particularly Taoism, there's a concept known as the Tao, which translates to the way. But this path isn't solely about choosing a direction for oneself. It's also about the amalgamation of what's possible for us and what some may call destiny. Indeed, the outcomes of our futures, our lives, are influenced by our thoughts, our words, and our actions, which in turn reflect our individual personalities. Yet, we can't neglect the existence of other forces, those beyond our control which significantly impact the results of our efforts. The approach, then, is to become more self-aware. Walking through life entirely alone is a daunting task. Having the support of close friends, a brotherhood, a community, or any group where there's a common ground or resonance is incredibly beneficial. Sometimes you meet a person and through conversation, if you are sufficiently self-aware, you may sense a harmony or resonance with them. Finding common frequencies and wavelengths that align with what resonates within you. It's similar to one's preference in music. People have different tastes because certain beats resonate with them pleasantly, sounding like music to their ears, while others might seem jarring. This may be tied to our individual past experiences that resonate within our memories, shaping our reactions and preferences. We recall that you may have heard these sounds before, that you might have previously encountered these types of frequencies. Every time you quickly resonate with something, it could signal that you are beginning to recall a familiar place, an experience where you have been before. It feels like you are picking up from where you left off. On the other hand, just because you witness something with which you do not resonate, it doesn't mean there's no potential there. Everything unfamiliar, anything that currently disturbs or challenges you, can also present opportunities. When we discuss the sensation of being lost, of not knowing one's past, one way to embark on a journey of discovery is to engage with others. Through socializing and conversing with different people, you may find topics or ideas that resonate with you. The concept of a comfort zone and stepping out of it is instructive here. We feel comfortable with things we're accustomed to, having experienced them repeatedly. For example, the first interaction with cold can be uncomfortable, but with regular exposure, you become more at ease with it, eventually even finding it comforting. Hence, comfort is often the result of familiarity, of having gone through certain experiences multiple times. Feeling uncomfortable or facing discomfort simply indicates that you are encountering a boundary, a limit you have not yet crossed sufficiently. Why do I believe it's necessary to push these boundaries and exceed your own limits from time to time? The reason is that without doing so, you risk stagnating in the narrow confines of your past experiences. Living a comfortable life typically means you are continuously staying within a familiar territory. Knowledge you have gathered either from this life or from previous generations that you haven't expanded upon. Each time you cross that line, each time you push your boundaries, you are growing, uncovering new horizons. You bring light into an area that was once shrouded in darkness and uncertainty. It's uncomfortable because you can't predict the outcome of crossing that boundary. People fear this uncertainty. But there's only one way to transform the unknown into knowledge, and that is through direct experience. Once you've done it, 
than you truly know. There are so many queries that words alone cannot satisfy. They hit a barrier that can only be breached when intellectual knowledge transitions into action. This action then provides the answers. In our tradition, the moment these discoveries are made through personal experience, that's when we refer to it as authentic knowledge or sometimes wisdom. This is the genuine understanding that comes from your own exploration, far more substantive than the intellectual knowledge passed on by a teacher or friend. This preliminary knowledge must be converted into action, which then matures into experience. Experience arms you with the tools you need to advance. We have a method. Once you feel that spark, you must nurture it to help it grow into a flame. If you are constantly doubting and second-guessing yourself, it will surely snuff out that burgeoning fire. Once the fire has started burning, let it grow, invest your thoughts positively, and resist the temptation to contemplate why it might not work. Do not extinguish the flame before it has had the chance to flourish. You need to move beyond constant self-interrogation and learn to trust in the power of your thoughts. Once an idea exists in the mind, it can be rendered into reality if you find a way to transform mental concepts into tangible action. This transformation is what brings ideas into the physical realm, making them accessible not just to you, but to others as well.